everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So doing some more work on the lighthouse today. Yeah, closing in on 26%. We won't reach that this session, but we are getting closer to it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to fill in up to probably this vertical point of the lighthouse. Maybe I'll even fill in the whole part of the tower there. I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet, as usual. <laughs> I can see I often decide as I stitch, so oh, look at that. It's in a knot. Huh. Okay, there. Yeah, I never know. Sometimes pulling on the end will make the knot tighten up more, sometimes it releases it, so it's just kind of a, yeah. I'll pull it and hope for the best, <laughs> kind of a situation. But yeah, like I said, still no snow. It's been very nice, barely below freezing. So yeah, very odd to have no snow for. Christmas, but that looks like it's, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, it's a beautiful blue sky, so that's certainly been nice. So yeah, I bought myself a clear plastic uh, Christmas ornament ball, and I put some of the thread ends in from this uh, from this project. So I'm thinking maybe I'll make one for each uh, big project that I have with the different color palettes. So I have the one from this. I was thinking one from Deer Creek. I don't know if I'll do one from Firefly because there's so many dark colors. We'll see. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of black in that jar. Right now I'm keeping them in their own uh, jars, so. I said I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them, but I decided to make the little Christmas ornament, so that was cool. I didn't pack it completely, like, stuffed full in there. I just kind of loosely put it in there because I said it kind of looks cool. You can see the threads kind of swirling around and not totally packed in, like, stuffing, so yeah, it looks kind of cool. It wasn't too heavy. I was a little worried about that too. If I, if I stuffed it too full, that it would be too heavy. So, but yeah, I just found some at the dollar store, and uh, I didn't come up with the idea. I'd seen some other people talking about doing it, and I thought, yeah, I'll do that too. There was someone who said they even stuck their old needles, uh, in the container as well. So, I didn't bother though. My um, my needles when they get worn out. Right now, I've been keeping them in an old pill container, and then I'll chuck the whole container that way. People won't get stuck by them, even though it's, you know, sewing needles, not like medical syringes, so it's not really a biohazard, but still, you know, I don't want people getting stuck on them. That is no good. Yeah, there was someone who showed in one group I was in sort of their... They had a shelf of the jars of the trimmed bits. It was pretty cool. I think they also stitched the extreme cross country way. So how you do all of one color. So theirs was really like stripes, which looked really cool. Yeah. Mine are kind of mixed in, but you could see sort of layers in the stripes of sort of, okay, here was where the bunch of vibrant bright blues was. That was where I was stitching on the peacock itself. You know, here's where there's more yellows and purple. That's when I was stitching the wall and the flowers. And yeah, I just thought that was really cool. So I kind of took some out and I kind of pulled them apart and mixed them up a bit in the in the ornament. But yeah, I put a picture of it on my uh, Instagram. I'll put a I'll put a link to it here if I remember. Although I think I have a link to my Instagram page, but not to the specific post. So in the uh, description box, yeah, if you want to check that out. But yes, I think I'll have one for Deer Creek. I'll have one for 
each of the Thomas Kincaid's because one is like a purpley palette because it's twilight and the other one is more of a beige golden palette because it's a uh, sunset so yeah that'd be kind of cool but it will be a while till I get to those because yeah I want to finish this one that I'm working on and then uh I have Deer Creek to do next which is a smaller piece 200,000 stitches exactly because yeah it's 400 by 500 so 200,000 even and then after that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next I might work on my stained glass Zelda as that is but I might not be done the black by then so maybe not yeah in that case I will probably do one of the Thomas Kincaid pieces probably the Twilight one I am looking forward to Twilight Cottage yeah I'm looking forward to that one and I haven't decided what count I'm gonna work on I don't I haven't got any fabric that I'm gritting up right now so well because I have enough for the moment I said I have this one and then I've got Deer Creek is already <laughs> Deer Creek is gritted because that was the piece of fabric on which I started this one the first time and then I used the wrong color I used the 01 white tin instead of white yeah. And someone said I could have left it and said the clouds were stormy, but yeah, it would have bothered me. So I restarted. I think that is the first time I've had to restart one of these big full coverage pieces. So I guess I'll count myself lucky. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I was joking, you know, are you even a stitcher if you don't have a story like this, right? Where are you? You got your fabric turned the wrong way around or you started with the wrong color or yeah you didn't measure your fabric properly or yeah well so that is one reason why i like the gridding i can tell that it's going to fit on the fabric if all the grids fit yeah i always like to put a uh, scrap piece of thread through the top left corner too so that I know I have it the right way around and even then before I put it in my frame I still count my squares and make sure that yeah, there is enough to fit <laughs> oh yeah I saw someone who had started one of theirs and the fabric was a rectangle and they started it the wrong way so there wouldn't have been room for the whole width and it was a max color too. Oh, I felt so bad for them. That's so much work. And people were saying, well, you could, you know, reduce the size of the picture, but they said, no, there's detail on the far right-hand side that they wanted to have done too. It just would bother them if part of the picture was missing, which I understand. Yeah. I don't think I would be able to leave it that way either. <laughs> Although, yeah, I saw one where somebody had, I think it was a couple of angels, and so the legs were missing because, yeah, they miscounted the fabric and had worked from the top down. And honestly, that crop actually looked fine. I wouldn't even have known if they hadn't told me, so, yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, I'm in a Star Trek group and they, um, there was someone who posted a picture of a review somebody did. They bought one of the, the Moopsy stuffed animals and the fa the head was sewn on upside down like the face features. So its mouth was at the top. And yeah, 
Oh, and somebody said it's a whoopsie instead of a moopsie. I'm like, well, flip an M and upside down, it's a W, so it actually works really well. <laughs> oh, yeah, how did no one notice? Mm. Somebody said, well, maybe the moopsie is like um, an owl and it can turn its head all the way to the back, <laughs> which would make it even more terrifying. Oh, dear. making sure I didn't catch a big loop on the back there. Kind of felt like I might have before I cut that. But it did not. Yeah, sometimes when I'm drawing across the back, I can get the needle to go through the loop by accident and it makes basically like a giant satin stitch on the back, which I do not want. Yeah, I tried, um, regular embroidery, not cross stitch when I was a teenager, but I was not good at getting my stitches to look even. Yeah, they had some really nice ribbon embroidery where, so it looks like flowers on the fabric, but uh, yeah, I could never get mine to uh, look even and to lie flat. Mine always looked all messed up, so maybe I'd do better now that I've had more practice, but I don't know, now that I'm hooked on cross stitching, yeah. kind of filling into the lighthouse and I may, I think, work up to this just before this grid line here. Yeah, where the tower of the lighthouse is. And then continue filling in from there before I move the whole frame over. That may be what I'll do. Let's see how long this piece is here. No, not very, okay. Yeah, it's really long enough for one, so I'll just start a new thread here for these stitches. Was my needle container there with the the needles to be thrown away yeah I think I kind of go through have to get rid of a needle about once a month like it's hard to say how long they last since I stitch with multiple needles but yeah when they start shredding the thread in the eye or the last one that I got rid of was making a little tick sound every time it went through the fabric it was catching it so yeah that was time for it to go it must have developed a rough spot yeah there was someone who said they change their needle every time they finish a page but I just kind of do it when it starts to not feel right Yeah, so I think I'm not going to make my Christmas toffee this year. I was talking about it in a earlier video saying I might make it, but yeah, I got so much other <laughs> sweets. Make eggnog cheesecake because I can't drink eggnog. It upsets my stomach, but I can have it if it's used in a cheesecake and it's really yummy that way. So I make one every year. And I always make now uh, steamed carrot pudding, which is like a traditional uh, British dessert. Yeah, it uh, uses like currants, another two kinds of raisins. Uh, and then carrot, grated carrot and grated potato, which you wouldn't think. Yeah, plus some um, like, you know, brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then you... You steam it for like uh, three hours 
and uh, yeah, what the British call pudding and what Americans call pudding are not the same thing. Yeah, it's like a traditional. <clears throat> and it's yummy. Yeah, it was funny because I buy currants only for making that. And uh, one time we ran out of raisins and my husband wanted a snack and he figured, oh, I can just eat these. They're like little raisins. Yeah, he didn't realize that they're not meant to be eaten by themselves. They're supposed to be put in something where they rehydrate because, yeah, they're like sandy. <laughs> the texture is not good. Mm. I mean, technically, yes, they do look like little raisins, but they certainly don't taste like it. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to see this other thread I have parked here. That's a longer one and it's closer to carry that one out. So I'm going to end off this piece, which is what I figured back when I started it. That's what I thought I was going to do. Yeah, I guess I better put stuff on my list too before they run out. Cranberry sauce and stuffing mix and <clears throat> yeah, I don't cook turkey because none of us are really big turkey fans. Plus, it's just me, my husband, and our son who he doesn't really eat meat. So yeah, a turkey is just way too much. So yeah, I make chicken instead. And I make these really good um, twice-baked garlic potatoes with roasted, fresh roasted garlic. So yeah, it's really yummy. It's not very difficult either. Yeah, you just bake the, you wrap the garlic in foil. Well, you cut off the top bit. And then you wrap the garlic in foil and bake it for like an hour and until it's soft. And then, yeah, it's really good. In fact, I do that when I have lots of garlic and I don't want it to go bad. I'll... I'll roast it ahead of time and then you just squeeze all the all the pulp out of the um out of the garlic cloves and uh freeze it on parchment paper and yeah it's really nice to just throw into soups or sauces and stuff you don't even really need to thaw it that much ahead of time I just take it out of the freezer and you just kind of slice some bits off with a sharp knife and then throw them in your sauce or your mashed potatoes or whatever yeah they're so good you basically use it like you would use the jarred garlic, only it's frozen and roasted. And yeah, it's such a delicious flavor. Oh, I felt so bad. One of my friends said they're allergic to garlic and onions, which means they basically can't use any prepared foods because it's in everything, right? <laughs> like, oh, that sucks. I feel bad for them. growing up my mom did the everyday cooking but my dad did the big holiday meals yeah so uh, Christmas Easter yeah Yeah, a fair amount of confetti here. Can't see what I'm doing there. That thread in the way. Yeah, the bottom of this um, pass here has been going really quickly because it's a lot of one color. So as it goes back into the shoreline, into the water, broken up by, there's a few little sailboats there, but yeah, it's going pretty quick. 
yeah, the left hand side of this pattern has been a lot less busy than the uh, right hand side, that's for sure. Take a look, yeah, I will carry this over. It's still within that inch, which is about the maximum length I like to carry. Yeah, I know there was someone who said that they, uh, they end and restart if it's more than three stitches away. I thought, wow, you're way more dedicated than me. <laughs> but the back of their pattern did or their work did look very, very neat. So there was that. But yeah, like I say, in the end, when it's up on the wall, no one's going to see the back. So as long as it's not lumpy, I really don't care. <clears throat> yeah, mine is sort of the middle of the road. It's not the neatest, but it's also not the messiest I've seen either. <laughs> bit more here. Yeah, you can kind of see where the colors are starting to come straight down because of the lighthouse tower there. So I'm going to kind of fill into the tower, then I'm going to stitch the tower itself. And then that'll be a good sort of natural break point that's about that's 70, 70 columns in, stitches in which is uh, about how far I go across six or seven big squares each time I remove the frame. So yeah, fill into there, fill in the bottom, and then I will move the frame. So I think I'll be moving the frame before the end of the month, but maybe not, we shall see. Yeah, it all kind of depends because of course it is Christmas and there's a lot of other stuff going on, even if we're not going to visit family this time. Yeah. Well, we did it once, but yeah. It was not cheap, and as we had to go back to, yeah, BC because of my mother in law's passing, yeah, we won't be able to afford to go again. So, oh, plus, I don't think I really want to put the pressure on my father in law to be hosting or anything. Yeah. He's definitely dealing with enough right now. And we don't want to put him out, so. We told him he could come out here, but we totally understood if he didn't feel up to traveling. And I mean, he does have uh, a couple of their kids, their grown kids do live near him. So one of them lives right in town. So yeah, she can come over, no problem. And another one lives just about an hour away. So yeah, they've been They've been popping in a lot to help him, so. <clears throat> okay, so let me just check this other thread here, I think is Another long one. Yeah, I have two long ones, so I'm just going to end this one off. I'm going to carry that other thread sort of over sideways. as sort of that's the way the stitches are going. This one is further to reach down to sort of that line of stitches, so I'm going to just end this one off as we do not need both. Okay, so right about at that grid line, the bottom of this one here is kind of a good place, or close to it is a good place to stop and fill in sort of that corner there. 
and then carry it on. Because, yeah, like I say, I don't like to have, try not to work over too big of an area at once or I end up with so many live needles that it starts to become more difficult to keep everything from tangling. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, goodness, pardon me. I have slept better the last few days at least, so <laughs> there's that. I've been keeping up with my walks, which helps. Yeah, I was saying I wrapped my son's presents the other day and then some of the bows fell off because I guess they're very old and the glue has dried out, so I gotta make some double stick tape to fix that. Cause yeah, I tried picking one up and putting it back on the other day, but it fell off again. I guess the glue is just too dried out. Yeah, I don't even know how old those bows are, but very. <laughs> well, it was sort of one of those things that every year I couldn't find them and I bought more and then one day I finally did find them and yeah, so I ended up with a ton. Okay, so this one is going to, I'm going to carry it up to here. I guess I didn't really need to tack it down because I was going to do this stitch in the corner here, but oh well. It won't hurt anything to have an extra tack stitch there. Yeah, I sometimes do that when I'm carrying things a ways. I just sort of do a little pin stitch to tack it down and then helps to keep things tidy. Okay, so I'm going to stitch to like one before the grid line because this thread is going to run out after I do these four stitches. So that just... Yeah, that just kind of makes a natural point to make a break there. all of these threads here and set them aside so they aren't in my way. Yeah, it's funny, we watched uh, the little Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, the stop-motion one. And uh, I remember my son, when he was in about kindergarten or something, at Christmas one year, he asks, he says, Mom, can we watch the Squeaky Nose Show? And I'm like, the Squeaky Nose Show? Like, what's he talking about? And then he makes the, he imitated the sound of the Rudolph's nose make. It was like, oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> So it's funny, sometimes we joke now, so, so it's that time of year, you want to watch the squeaky nose show? <laughs> Everyone's so mean to poor Rudolph. Ooh. 
Okay, let me do one out of order here. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Last time I stitched a little differently because I, uh, yeah, I ended up sloping things that way and following the roof line of this lighthouse here. So yeah, I could have done one thread, short thread carrying this way and one thread carrying that way, but I didn't have any short leftover threads. So I'm going to just use one big one and I will skip one stitch every now and then I do that. Because it was just more hassle too do them perfectly in order, so. So I said I wasn't going to make predictions, but I think I'm pretty safe in saying that I'm going to reach uh, 80,000 completed before the end of the month because we're at close to 79,300. So, yeah, and I still have, I think, three more sessions before the end of this month, something like that. Yeah. And I do stitch in between my my filmed sessions too, so. Okay, the 794, let's see how much of this is out around here. Not a ton. But I do have a lot of space in my tray, so I may just take it out for now. Put it away when I end up needing the space for a color with more stitches. careful to sort of I'm splitting these blues up and keeping them further apart in my tray even if they're they're close to another color so that I don't mix them up I don't always put them in working or in number order in my tray because yeah say like 794 and 799 are very close and I don't want to accidentally put a scrap piece of thread back in the wrong place easier if I have them far apart on my tree. I avoid doing that. What happened there? Oh, I see a little end popped up. Okay. Gotta just Yeah, sometimes you kinda get a tug of war with the threads. I'm trying to keep the ends at the back and the working threads on the front when they're coming up from the same spot. Yeah, that can happen.
checking that's long. It's also long, but yeah. It's further to park with this one, so I'm gonna unless hmm, no. Oops. Yeah, I'm thinking actually this one I might do this one park here and carry over to the side. So this one I'm going to carry over to the side as well. So actually I will not end it off. Yeah. So I can kind of see the way it branches off. I might as well keep both. Then I don't have to either jump around more with one thread or end up adding a, another thread again after I've tied one off. That just kind of means more work in the long run. lot of live needles here but I think pretty soon I'm going to be able to either end them off or park them way out of the way and unthread them so it's all good like this one this one is done after this stitch well there was no needle on it so <laughs> works out the same at the end Goodness, what the heck? Oh, <laughs> the needle fell out of my hand and instead of dropping to hang down, it ended up sticking to the magnet on the other side. So I was grabbing at the air and I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I was just like, where did it go? I didn't finish off the thread, so it should be hanging there. Ooh.
I am at 79,300 even. So I need another 700 stitches to get to 80,000 and that should be no problem. Yeah. Before the end of the month, yeah. Barring some extremely unforeseen circumstances, yeah. That should be no issue. Okay, so I got that one. Get the needle back because I won't be using it for a while. Same with this one. Just looking a little funny, bulging up a little strangely. Now we're down to like three live needles, so no problem.
realize there's an end there. ended up with basically a straight edge here simply because that's what the design is doing. I just find it easier to yeah, follow the colors. Yeah, so this way I don't have any more live needles. I filled in that whole part and then I can start again. Go up to the top and I'm gonna fill in the lighthouse tower. If I had forced it to sort of stay diagonal and work across the tower, then I would have had a lot more yeah, live needles at the same time and more chance of running into problems. So This one's a little darker than the others, so I'm going to draw it along the back just to be certain it won't show through. There we are. So, like I said, back up to the top pretty much, move along that edge there. Okay. Trying to decide if any of the leftover pieces I had were long enough or if I needed to start a new one, and yeah. Starting a new one is what I determined. Sometimes too, once I've sort of gone through and all the needles are gone, I'll just sort of smooth out all the threads to start again. Oops. Keep things tidy. Sometimes what I do is I turn off the search feature and just use the march, march, mark feature when, uh, yeah, I have so many colors sort of alternating like this. I just find it a little bit easier. Oops. Oh, yeah, let's not have a knot in there. Come on. 
you just gonna be a brat, huh? Oh, man. Oh, nope, we got it, good. Okay. The colors are already attached. I don't have to look up which is what. just kind of saves me a step switching back and forth between search and uh, move mode some people may decide to sort of just do all of one color and fill in the gaps like I said it's totally up to you how you prefer to do it. Right, this is the one I decided to carry over to the side. Switch back to highlighting. Yeah, the colors in between these stitches are a bit light, and I don't want to risk this darker purple showing through, so I'm going to tie this one off here instead of carrying it. It's actually still long enough that the leftover pieces can be used for single stitches later, so I didn't waste anything either. Okay, back up to the top again.
think I'm going to cut this off. Oops. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. Just before this grid line. Yeah, that's sort of a natural break point in the colors. So set those aside. Yeah, and I'll probably carry on further to the right, probably after I move the whole frame. Oh, no, that is the wrong one. Yeah, to do this one first. 3766. Now it's time to use this one. Following the line of the color straight up and down the way it's going here goes faster than my trying to stitch diagonally across it. Yeah, you can do a whole bunch more stitches in a row of the same color. Keep my momentum going that way. I was looking at this picture the other day. I've been calling it two peacocks, but I think the second one is actually the uh, pea hen, the female, because she doesn't have the big, the big bright tail. So yeah, this is the, the main peacock, and then I think that's his mate <laughs> further down in the picture.
because I think this same artist did one that's called Two, Two Dancing Peacocks. And yeah, they both have the big bright tails. So it was between that one and this one. They were both gorgeous. It was kind of hard to pick just one. But yeah, basically bought this pattern immediately after it was released because it was just so gorgeous I had to have it. <laughs> Double checking, there was no knots back there, but it's no, it's just there's so many uh, pin stitches that there's a lot of ends down there. So could kind of feel like they're potentially loops where there shouldn't be. Oh, that didn't go quite right. Yeah, that was a bit off. my stitching with two hands I like to sort of feel along the bottom and make sure that I don't have knots in case I don't catch them right away that can help me to catch them later or sooner rather than later there was one long one I think this one I drew across the back and it kind of came undone yet. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. And it's long enough that I can re-secure it. There, just making sure it's really good and secure in there. There we go.
Okay, now I'm gonna tie this one off. I don't need two more. Yeah, that happens. You can see all the stuff to the left of this looks like it hasn't been uh, filled in, but yeah, just wiggle the pattern around a little bit and it corrects itself. It's a glitch it has every now and then. That's on the Pattern Keeper app. Which I refuse to stitch without. <laughs> stop for now. Yeah, it's got quite a lot done. I've been stitching for a fair amount of time. I gotta get up and move around. So uh yeah, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Alright, thanks everyone. Bye.